vicious debate. Uh, 96K doesn't sound different to 44.1. Uh, CD sounds better than vinyl, all of this stuff. So um, what, what is driving those, like, those decisions? And, you know, is there a distinction? Is there a, can you hear a qualitative sure. difference? Absolutely. Well, to all those statements, I 100% agree and 100% disagree at the same okay. time. Yeah. And and it's because these things get confusing. It's uh, does CD sound better than vinyl? Well, yes and no. Actually, it depends. And then and there's many factors even beyond that. How is the vinyl cut and from what source? Is the vinyl just the CD on vinyl? Which there's a lot of vinyl that exists out there that simply is the CD format, just then put to a. It's almost like a yeah. That's not better necessarily. It's just, just a storage medium for the CD the CD file. But um, I suppose, uh, where should we start? There's so much to dive into. I guess we can start with sample rate. What is sample rate? Yeah, um, let's do that. Let's do that. So, so sample rate is digitized audio signal. You can't hear it until it gets converted back to analog. So you have to go through a digital analog converter just to hear it. Otherwise, it's just data. So it's data that is audio analog signal converted to digital that is broken up into little slivers. So in, in film, we have 24 frames per second. We're for, pretty familiar with that. That flashes in, your, in front of your eyes so quickly that your brain understands it as not flashing light. It understands it as something close to what we experience in reality and yeah. me looking in front of you. Actually, I'm not looking in front of you. It's, a, it's an illusion, but my brain thinks that I am. So with audio, uh, it's the same thing. We're slivering these little samples up and we can do it in... And we, can, we can do it in... Uh, Divide that up in, in the various fashions. 44.1 is 44,100 samples per second of flashing samples that hits your ear that convinces you that you're hearing something true. Uh, and we can go higher and higher than that. We can go to 48,000. We can double 44.1 go to 88.2. We can double 48 and go to 96. And we can go up to all the way up to 192. And you can even go beyond that. But uh, those are the, the common ones, 44.1, 48, 88.2, 96, and one. 92. Uh, that has to do with sample rate. Then you have bit depth, which is something different. Uh, you have, for every sample, you have a, a parameter in terms of how many bits um, are responsible for each sample, 16 bits or 24 bits. And I believe it's every bit is responsible for 8 dB of, of dynamic range. So if you have more than 16 bit, if you have 24 bit, you're, it's, it's that much more dynamic range that's allocated per sample. So really, really low level stuff. It's very important in, you know, orchestral arrangements where you have big, big peaks and then tiny little quiet passages that are, are almost, you know, you can't even hear them even when you're monitoring full level uh, before you would hit that floor which would then get lopped off at 16 bit. Uh, and that's where we have to introduce dither and stuff. So you don't have to get into truncating and all of that. So I don't like, like I said, these are pretty, you can go pretty far down the rabbit hole explaining all the technical ends of things, but in a nutshell, that's what sample rate and bit depth is. That, yeah. And that's when, you know, you're, if you're the typical bedroom producer running stuff off and you're going, what should it be? 4824 or 44.116? Would you say at a certain level, there's just no, there's no value in distinguishing between those things? Well, here's where I would, uh, there's many things to consider. You have to consider why you're going above 44.1. And then you're also having to consider how you're going to release this to the world. And do you have to start introducing sample rate conversion? Because sample rate conversion outweighs, in my opinion, going up. You know, if you, if in other words, if you're going to 96K, but you have to end up at, at, at uh, 16 bit 44, you have to weigh out, is it worth it uh, to have to go through a sample rate conversion if, if you're working digitally, right? Because just going through a sample rate conversion can, can introduce, depending on what converter you use even too, can introduce a whole lot of loss. So is it worth it? Now, in my opinion, generally it is, especially because we, we uh, master analog. So if somebody mixes and records, uh, records and mixes rather a 96K song and I play it back, I'm playing it back and converting that signal from digital to analog at 96K high res. And then on the back end, I can record in at whatever sample rate without any sample rate conversion, I choose direct feed, which is another reason to, I mean, another benefit to going to analog is that you can bypass sample rate conversion and get a clean shot right in. And then I can re I can uh, reset my capture machine to 96 and do a separate print just for 96. So no sample rate conversion at all. And I'm not a fan of sample rate conversion really. Um, so there's, there's that, but 
you know, stamp rates, uh, they're, they're important, but they're not the most important thing. There's the more, the more important thing is technique. You know, how good is the integrity of your recording? How good are you at recording, you know, or who, who have you involved in your project that, that can bring your recording to where it needs to be? Those decisions great, greatly outweigh the difference between somebody listening to 48 versus 44. So uh, the, the, the conclusion to derive from that is if we're squabbling as me and one of my friends used to, I regret to say, if we're squabbling over 44 versus 96, really we're putting the cart before the horse and we're not thinking about music, which is the important thing. I would say so. Yeah. I'd say that there's certainly, I mean, in my opinion, and I mean, I, I get to cheat because I got really nice speakers that reveal <laughs> that a lot easier than let's say, you know, an Apple earbud, you know, can yes. you really hear, can my grandmother hear the difference between 96 K and 44? She probably wouldn't be able to hear it on here, but yeah. And let alone the Apple earbuds, I would, but I, this is, this is my world, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's, but it's a, it's a subtle thing, you know, and it's almost a feel thing more than anything, because what it is, is it's closer to analog. It's closer to full resolution signal. Um, and what I mean by that is that at some point, well beyond what we can consciously hear, there is a cutoff point with digital in terms of the ultra harmonic frequency spectrum. You know, yeah. there is a, there, it does lop off and it lops off at a higher point at 96 than it does at 44, but it lops off nevertheless. If you're listening to true analog, a true analog recording, maybe it's 1970s vinyl that was recorded analog and cut analog, and there hasn't been any digital in, uh, intervention, uh, that, and you play it on a turntable and you're, and you're playing direct analog through analog speakers, that is an experience where there is no, there is no lop off. There's it's no loss. Signal. It's similar to being in a, in my experience, it's as, it's as pure as listening to a cellist in a, in a hall playing in front of you. It's the yeah. closest we have to that in recorded medium. Whenever you go to digital, you're, you've, lost, you've lost that because no matter what you do, you're lopping off the ultra harmonic frequency spectrum and, and you're, you're, um, you're at the mercy of the integrity, even under the best of circumstances of that converter and how you're playing it back. So uh, it creates a little bit, a subtle stress on the brain when you do that. Very, very subtle. Because the brain needs to compensate for that loss and it does it unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So these are the things to think about. You know, if you're going for a certain arrangement that, that the intent of that is to be just completely pure, and, and you're a purist in, in your pursuit of that, then, then you want to start thinking about these things. If you're going to, if you're making an EDM song, it's probably going to be the last thing on your mind, you know, because you're already in the digital world. All your elements are already digital. So you're completely thinking about something different. So with this argument of digital versus analog, there's so much more than just this black and white type of comparison. It's, uh, it's really much, what are you trying to achieve? What's the music that you're, that you're working on? All of these things need to be thought of. That's, the two two questions that come straight to front of mind from from that is so one is I had the benefit of um, grabbing uh, a great number of my dad's vinyls from the seventies from his collection because he was in the uh, you know I'm washing out all of my irrelevant old media I'm going straight to digital so I was like, I'll have all the vinyl thanks I've got you know an original copy of what's going on Marvin Gaye and we put that thing on and we turn it up and we're all sat in my house going why is that so good? I have no idea. And it's all to do with this phenomenon you described of analog to analog to analog to analog. There's been no interruption between Marvin singing and it coming out of my speakers. Yes. And then under the best of circumstances, now there are some beautiful recorded analog, you know, digital. Now, now you can only listen to it digital recordings. And, you know, a lot of times I, I referenced this one album that we did, uh, the Punch Brothers, the Fosbrest and Blues, the arrangements are like, where do you go from here? It's just, you don't go anywhere beyond this for, for what they are doing, you know? Um, the musicianship, the mixing, everything, the way it was recorded, it sounds so pure and analog. And yet you have to listen to it as an MP3 on the digital platforms right now. Nevertheless, I'm still, as a music person that enjoys music and with ears that, that are spoiled, um, I still enjoy it and I can still feel connected to it. 